when one talks about intoxicants in general, the, the difficult thing to convey to people because of the way the culture works is how important what we take in really is. And uh, people tend to minimize that. They tend to not think about it. They tend to put it in a special category as if it were really remarkable that once in a while somebody uh, uses an intoxicant or what have you. But in fact, if you talk to people, um, that it's astonishing what percentage of our emotional life really is caught up in what we ingest. I'm including food here as well as intoxicants, but it, it, it has a uh, certain similarity with each other. You know, I think Freud was right. To work and to love are really where uh, the two most important aspects of our emotional life, of what we do with ourselves, how we function, where we get our self-esteem, all that, and our relationships, whether we're close to people, whether we're not close, and so on. There's no question that those are the two most significant factors. But if you really want the next factor with the decline of religion, I really do think it's what we ingest. And uh, whether we've uh, taken in too much or too little, when we're going to take it in, when we're not going to take it in, what we really like, what we don't like, with whom, under what circumstances, really is astonishingly uh, a busy notion. And, uh, and intoxicants remain part of it, of whether we're going to do anything or not do it. And it really starts in early adolescence and it continues through much of your life uh, in one form or another. And it's sort of like a hidden secret that, uh, that, that this goes on and that people care about and are interested. It's astonishing, again, how little uh, people really pay attention. Now, if that's true, that this is a really very important factor and it's an important factor in virtually everyone's life, and I would include people who are abstinent, incidentally, re retaining yourself as abstinent is just as much what you do and what you don't do as if you're doing something. So it isn't as if you can do, deal with it once and for all by not ever doing anything. That requires reaffirmation uh, throughout much of your life. So that if you accept that, and if you accept what the anthropologists tell us, that there are no known cultures except the far north Eskimos that have not used an intoxicant on some regular basis. Every culture ever studied, and as I like to say, the far north Eskimos breathe deeply a lot. That they had these rituals where they did a lot of deep breathing and so on, threw themselves on the ground and so on, which also is a form of intoxication, but they never were able to make anything out of blubber that I know of that, that worked. But their diets were very restricted, and it's astonishing that they uh, managed to work out the rituals they did. But if that's true, too, is that everybody does it, which, again, you wouldn't think was so in this sort of puritanical culture, then the important thing is not whether one uses an intoxicant so much, is how one uses it, of how we differentiate between use and misuse of how we think about how it works for a particular person in a particular cultural setting. And that really changes the discussion a great deal. And y you would hardly know it in this culture where there really is sort of an implication of why do you have to do this anyway? You know, like maybe everybody would be better off if there were no such uh, substances and if nobody had to bother with it. Again, it makes it seem like an artifact and to a certain extent a moral issue. Now, my thing that I've been working on for all too many years is that if you are going to understand anything about intoxicant use, what causes a person to do it, how they do it, and, and how it's going to work in their lives, you have to understand three variables, and you have to know all three of them. You have to know about the drug itself, or the substance itself, the set. That is how people think and feel about doing it. And in my definition, that includes their personality structure. And then the physical and social setting in which the use takes place. And that all three have to be understood and worked with if we're going to make any sense at all of, uh, of how these things work.